Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode. I am joined today by the indomitable Daniel Warren Johnson. Daniel, thank Dan. Thank you so much for being on the show, man. Good. Dan, <laughs> yes, my friends call me Dan. Oh, <laughs> good to see you, bro. You too, you too. I've been I've been futzing with your name, actually, uh, not to make this into a tangent or anything, but uh, you know, I've heard the name D dubs. And mm-hmm. I know that you yourself, like that's kind of like a moniker that you give yourself. And I'm like, can we go shorter? What if I called you dubbers? <laughs> like is that like <laughs> like you know, Daniel Warren Johnson, it is a mouthful. Dan Johnson. No one might know who you're talking about. I've tried to think who actually started calling me D dubs because it was not myself. That was not was, that was not self that wasn't your T bone equivalent. It's either, like, no. it's either James Heron or Ramon Villa Lobos has oh. the crown of calling me D dubs. I think it was James. He started calling me that in Japan. We we took a Felix Comic Card, all the artists took a trip to Japan in 2015, August. And I think he started calling me D dubs there, but I could be wrong. Maybe he heard Ramon say it. It was sometime in 2015. I also was hanging out with Ramon at uh, Emerald City Comic Con in 2015. And maybe he called me D dubs, but then Ramon started calling me D dubs a bunch, but I don't know who started it. <laughs> yeah, it's addictive. I got to tell you, when you have a good nickname, you stick with it. And people, uh, people get, you know, Get, get swept up in it i'll tell you uh, I, i'm still yeah. waiting for mine but it's it's coming one day i'm still getting used to random people who like watch my youtube channel yelling out d dubs at comic cons i'm like oh they're talking to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true and i gotta tell you we we should be talking about uh so much more but i will plug the uh daniel warren johnson or d dubs channel which is at daniel warren johnson one uh <laughs> so glad you managed to snipe that nickname uh because that is that is where the search algorithm really 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 benefits you but uh it is it is a really fun channel 10k in subs i just got 10k uh, like yesterday yeah congratulations man uh, well earned over Thank 100 you. episode of uh of friday with d-dubs yeah and uh folks if you if you love if you're watching the show because you like uh dubbers is art uh <laughs> then you are going to flip when you watch his channel which is linked below uh because you get to watch the process happen that's one of the most amazing things about artists is just watching them make magic on the page uh in real time it's just such an incredible experience and it's just great to see the studio and to have you just give your your bob rossian uh cadence infused with it you're like yeah we're just gonna draw this dope ass truck destroy this this other rad ass jet it's gonna be <laughs> awesome uh or you'll play some guitar because that's another thing is that it, you know the most talented people never just stop at one thing right you always have to be uh have, you always be better than us you can draw you can play I'm, I'm, it sounds like rufio is like you can fly and you can fight but uh um, man, it's funny man. i've got like a friday with d-dubs bingo card that i need to start making it's like i lose an eraser or some <laughs> thing that i need to find so i'm like scruffing around my desk not drawing uh i like can't find a comic book that I was going to talk about. <laughs> uh, I accidentally show something I'm not supposed to show. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, my sound is too low or me playing guitar. There's all these random things that I'm one of my kids will run in. Sometimes there's another yep. bingo. So I, I need to figure it out. I need to make an official card, give it out to the fans. And if someone fills it out in time, I need to give them like a free trade paperback or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah or maybe one of those mini mini comics because you are also the master of the bootleg uh old man <laughs> skywalker and uh what was it uh green a uh, rogue oh god what is it green green it's leader green, green leader thank you uh, i wanted to move rogue one and green leader into one thing i was like rogue yeah. green that doesn't make any sense green leader um yeah and th- and now i'm official though because i am doing i did do a darth vader red white and Wait. yeah black white and red or red Bla- white or white black yeah. red black Who white knows? Red because it, it is, goes out tomorrow oh my god i saw it on instagram and it is just this incredible piece of uh it's it's vader's tie fighter and vader and uh oh sick Let's i see. love the uh the the tape or is it i can't even tell because it's you got the great depth of field going on i'm like is there is it taped art on the wall or is it like do you have um sketches and stuff you're like i gotta i gotta see if i can you know i need this temporarily up here because I, I was just watching the fugitive yesterday and i saw this um you know that that move where um uh tommy lee jones's office in chicago he has all these like pieces taped on the window mm. and i'm like does anybody do that does anybody tape all their like all their temporary important documents like in clear view of what they need like or do they just put it in a pile on their desk like i do with everything 
there's I don't put important documents on the wall, but I do put like newspaper clippings or things that I'm like really digging. Yeah. Like there's this one article that was written in the Boston Globe years and years ago. Let me see if I can grab it actually. It's got to be at least 12 years ago. Yeah. I don't even have the date. After amputation, wrestler tries to ease rivals pain. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He was in a uh, he was, he's on like a, a wrestling, um, uh, like uh, amateur wrestling, like a team ah. and his, uh, his arm or I know his, his, uh, he lost his leg. It like got broken really bad. They had to amputate it. Oh my God. Um, and I don't know, man, it just really affected me because it talked about the kid who accidentally, you know, broke his leg. He obviously, oh was yeah. Crying. You know what? I'm just going to read it. Yeah. And then, uh, you can edit it out if you don't want to, if we don't want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> sure. It's just a great yeah, totally. story. Okay. Okay. When Heriberto Avila lost his leg as a result of an accident during a high school wrestling match in January, he and his family could have started calling lawyers. They could have turned bitter or angry. But on, on the day, Heriberto, a Belv- Belvedere North High School sen- senior known as Eddie, woke up in a hospital bed and tearfully struggled to deal with the shock that his left leg had been amputated. He reminded his family and his pastor, who were in the room with him, that he was not the only one who needed solace. He was worried about his wrestling opponent, Sean, a <laughs> senior at Genoa Kingston High School, whose legal takedown had caused the broken bones and the rupture in a blood vessel that led to the amputation. We need to pray for Sean, too, Eddie said, because he needs to have peace in his heart. For his displays of courage and grace, Eddie, 17, the son of Mexican Im- immigrants, has become something of a hero in Beldivere, known for its Chrysler plant and one of the state's highest unemployment rates. Eddie lives in a modest duplex with his parents, Armando, 40, and Adriana, 39, who work in factories and three younger siblings. Oh, and then it ripped down here. So he talks about his siblings for a little bit. And uh, let's see. It has not been easier for either of the young wrestlers. When Eddie visited the Genoa Kingston team last week, he and Sean wrapped their arms around each other and wept. I told him he was an awesome guy, said Eddie, who has made it plain. He has no hard feelings. There's no one to blame here. This was an accident. Um, Eddie said that Sean tried to speak at the meeting, but he got too choked up to talk. But at the end... You know, they're interviewing Eddie, who is the amp who who got his leg, who lost his leg. Yeah. And Eddie, at the end of this article, Eddie starts choking up about Sean's like feelings. And I was like, this is wow. really powerful. And this is way before I even started to think about extremity, but uh, you know, a loss of a limb. I don't know, just very yeah. affecting and not really used a lot in storytelling. So No, definitely. I don't know. I kinda Thank you, Eddie. So it's yeah. it provided a little bit of inspiration, even. Comic yeah. Pop. You didn't know what you were going to get. A random no. article from the Boston Globe from like 13 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope the statute of limitations has passed for these poor kids. Let's, uh, because, uh, yeah, I, I oh, man, I love that how um, random bits of other people's lives can, you know, in not infect, but, you know, really bleed into our own and, 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 elicit something that we never knew was there you know like that idea of losing a limb and having it stick with you and being like wow like i there's something there and and that tremendous effort like that tremendous generosity and 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 selflessness and and thoughtfulness um on behalf of the amputee like what a what a what a a beautiful and inspiring story it's awesome yeah let's see if i can share my screen and show you some (laughs) Badass Darth Vader art now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Boom. So um, you have my my wannabe metal tracks in the background. Thrash fusion, thrash metal. <laughs> nice. Um, are but, these yours? Uh, like, are these your tracks? Are these like uh, what I will, originals? What I will do is I will just like it's like they're MIDI tracks. So <laughs> I uh, yes! I just drop them in and I shred to the random MIDI tracks and oh, like I love it. There's all these like metal packs, metal machine made of mm-hmm. metal, easy X metal, thrash metal, metal fusion, doom grooves, death like fusion, black metal. It's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> no, that's dope, man. No, trust me. This is the audience that loves. Uh, yeah. So like, I, I don't have the time to work with like an actual drummer. So like when I put together demos and stuff, I just have MIDI tracks that I kind of take and adjust here and there. But definitely. Um. Here's the uh, this is the page that they showed a preview of. 
Yeah. So um, it's okay to share. Like it's, I mean, I'm, God, assume, I'm assuming so. Yeah. Uh, this guy definitely has a rebel Alliance face tattoo. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is all in on the Alliance. He's like, do you know you this know, whole page? Like, you know, it's red, black and white or whatever the F it is. Right. Yeah, so, that's right. But so I his, like just, I just like the way it looks in black and white. So like the only thing I made red on this whole page, is that face is, tattoo? Is this face tattoo here? And so he then I colored it in here. I colored it in here red. Nice. And then um I just colored it Darth Vader's <laughs> like grill red down here. So and another thing, like, so here's some fun inside baseball. Like Lucasfilm was not too bad with like license or notes or whatever, but good man, they are very particular about the the bee boops oh, on, sure, uh, yes. on the Vader's chest, you know. Like, so I went all out. So why not? Right. It's fun. Yeah. And the lights are just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like <laughs> way too many lights on Darth Vader's <laughs> chest. <laughs> so like I would take off like three at a time and then we'd still keep getting notes. Like, all right, like, you got to take more, more, more. And then finally, I just blacked out the whole thing. You're like, why um, don't you just tell me what you want? They're like, I mean, I want it to look like the one from the movie. And it's like, that's it's not enough, man. Especially uh, if you're taking artistic license. I mean, you know. But I, lo- well, I love that that's very particular. That's the thing. Yeah, like, and the artistic like, license is because on. if I did actually do all the exact lights that are honest, it just makes like kind of a weird shape that was just kind of distracty. Like this makes like a cube shape, which yeah. is just perfect or not a cube, but a square. Yeah, and it's just all nice. and. Lo- but if you remove too much, it kind of re- gets rid of the allure. <laughs> that's and true. Here is my my daughter. Don't sip that, though. <laughs> Hello. I'm just smelling. You just smelled it. Thank you, honey. Can you close the door behind you? Thank you. My daughter just bringing me an old fashioned. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which my wife made. And, and oh, good. She it was, was like, like my, my daughter. She put had my daughter bring it in who's five and she's like pretending. To, I'm like, don't sip that. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but anyway, uh, so I ended up just blacking it out. But, um, you know, every once in a while, you have a panel that you just kind of go for, and this yeah. is one of those panels. It's it shows, man. Oh, thank you, thank you, hi, man. I'm so oh. and seeing um the way in which you do these broad <clears throat> brush strokes uh, throughout. Uh, it's one of those things where I I fell in love with it when I first saw your art, but seeing it in not in person, but in the through Friday with D Dubs, uh, and I'm like, oh, he just goes for like it's just I'm just like oh. I love it. And I love that it's all, you know, by hand, not that not to disparage uh, digital art, because there's so much that brings uh, it to life. And there's something really like people can just do incredible things with it. But this is just look at that, like just the raw, like visceral reality of the situation in such a, you know, oh, yeah, you get really I really you went all really in there. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Or like, why did I do this? It's like people are gonna spend like five seconds on this page, dude. It's it's because of art like that though that has changed my reading of comics. Because I took, I never really. I remember, you know, getting into comics again, like the second time, my first, my second life into comics, and uh, people saying like, "What's your favorite panel?" And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know, they're all just one big panel in my head. And then it's like thinking about how many comics I've read, but how many I've actually spent time like looking at the art and spending the time and totally. thinking about like these are human beings who are trying to like convey something that is essentially like, an, like you know, a five minute scene in one image. <laughs> and uh, it's just, yeah. But, but seeing this, it's like, yeah, there's, you got to sit there and look at it. And, uh, whew, yeah, it dope. took me a long time. And it's <laughs> funny too, like when you do a panel like this, which is so obviously like like over the top cinematic. Yes. Uh symmetry is of course super important. And yeah. I basically had to uh I took I so I the way I did this is I have like an iPad, like an iPad Pro, and I use um Procreate. If this is for the artist people, but yeah. Um on Procreate there's a symmetry tool. So you can draw on one side and it will mirror exactly what you draw. Oh, cool. So it's like, cause it's really awesome. Cause what I used to do is I used to draw half of it, then like flip it over and like light box it, oh. <laughs> oh. you know, cause I yeah. really love doing everything uh, like traditionally if I can, but 
like for this, like digital tools, like a symmetry tool is just perfect. It just yeah. works. And in that way I can just print it out on blue line and it works. And I futzed with this freaking panel for so long. I also hand lettered the whole story. Oh, it's, great. <laughs> it's not amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely stressed out my poor Marvel editor. My apologies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, my favorite though is like getting really to transport our families. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean you, you're 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 conveying an entire uh, emotional you know arc in just a few words, and part of the art is the lettering. If you if you if you get it right. Um, how I mean, long would the, you say? Okay. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say how long. You said it took a long time. Like, what's uh, how long did it take to do just the panel? Not even the whole page. Just like this panel here. I remember the whole panel because I'll like when I'm drawing, I'll like start down. I'll like go here, then I'll up here, then I'm up down here, then I'm here, gotcha, and, gotcha. and I just bounce all around. Mm-hmm. This took me a solid eight hours, which is long for me. Yeah. Um, usually, I average about seven, six, seven. I, I don't know, but this okay. Eight, it was like eight to ten, I think. Yeah. I just like it was really fun to like, go all out. It's a yeah. little bit like a painting, you know, which I don't usually do, and mm-hmm. I just spent so much time on it and like, the, like all the detail. He just, I know, yeah, that's oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a sec. Okay, and I'm gonna share one more panel with you all as an okay. exclusive look. Um, I'm gonna let's see. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Just give me one second. Sure. I'm going to screenshot this. So I, it's only one panel. Okay. And so you uh, can't accidentally like show more or. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah. Like yeah, it just keeps it. I'm not very good with technology. So let's see if I can figure this out. Desktop. Um, okay. Boom. Uh, I'm going to share it now. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Here we go. So I'm just like so happy with this X Wing. I need to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like just stretched enough. You know, like I'm taking yeah. some liberties with the design just a little. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but I always loved like uh, in like a new hope. I don't know if you notice. So in a new hope during the X Wing like fight scene when they're attacking the Death Star, yeah. like when the S foils open, I mean they're open. Like they go yes. all the way. And then in Return of the Jedi, they only like open like half. They really don't. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. When they <laughs> go always to the be crazy. Like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like these X Wing S foils are gonna be like cranked, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh uh Lucasfilm definitely made me change this. Oh, oh. god, mommy. I couldn't <laughs> you couldn't have anybody any no rebel uh no rebel pilots could scream for their mommies. <laughs> Which I thought probably was gonna be the case, but I just kind of went for it. So this will not be in the original. <laughs> this will not be in the story, it's only on the original art. <laughs> now, what's the alternative? What is what do they what did they green light? Um, I think they just wanted me to remove mommy. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Like, oh god. I don't think they made it change, made me change God, which is interesting, but they, I, I couldn't have mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that got too real. Um, yeah. I just love pathetic rebel soldiers dying. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is great. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I am so in awe. Um, and it's just so fun to see this, this version of star Wars. It's, it's, it's funny how um, for a, for a long stretch of time, we had one way to look at star Wars, right? It was just the three movies. Maybe if you wanted to go out there, you would watch the holiday special or some of the cartoons, but even like droids, it's like, Oh, you know, maybe (laughs) they'll, they'll play with the ships a little bit, but it's not really that exciting. The closest thing you got is the novels. And then you got to use the theater of the mind. Um, and I guess the dark horse series, like all the dark horse comics as well. But, uh, but then, like these kids today, like, you know, today, if you're like, Oh, I just, I'm thinking about getting into star Wars. It's like, well, you have, plenty to choose from you've got like 
three different trilogies. You've got all these oh offshoots and shows and cartoons and movies. And You're sounding like a good old union boy talking in the bar about how it used to be so it much used harder. To be so simple. It used to be so, yeah. Like you'd have to be like, oh man, like I remember discovering B wings and being like, oh my God, I didn't know there was a B wing. And they're like, oh yeah, no, this, this, you didn't notice this guy here. I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. Just watch, just pouring over. And there's no like movies. Google image. So you just had to pause the VHS yep. over and over until you got it right. Yep. Every time. Yeah, that's right. And that's how now I know like, well, my, my really wide S foils. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I, I mean, I want to say in story reason, maybe it's like the S foils only go wide when you know it's all out. But it's just like, <laughs> oh, OK, it, we're going for broke. This is a this is kind of like a ride or die mission we're going on right now. So the S foils are going to be like you said, they're going to be cranked. Um, but <laughs> second Death Star, they're like, well, I mean, like, look, we're fighting the second Death Star. We've beaten it before. You know, we don't need to crank them that much. Like, we're just going to we're going to go like minimal expansion for the S <laughs> for these S foils. Um, uh, let me see if I can. I'm going to share one more thing so for some process people. Sure. Yeah. Um, here are my. Oh, oh, sorry. One sec. Yeah. Here are my. My thumbnails for this. Uh specific the scene we i just showed the panel i just showed mm -hmm. oh so <laughs> you'll see that there's like little um uh there's like little uh what is it uh there's like little pieces of lettering here yeah um and i basically will just um Sometimes if I'm not really feeling it, I will just sketch in like a coffee shop on the actual script. Okay. And every once in a while I'll get something that's just genius or just perfect, you know, Yeah. but I'm, it's with like ballpoint pen or a pencil, like on the script page. So I will take a picture of it on my phone <laughs> uh -huh. and I'll like include it in the, like I, my iPad sketches just cause like, yeah. I was like, Oh, this X wing is really well drawn. I just like the way how intense the angle is. Yeah. I like this a lot. And originally Darth Vader's head was going to be on the horizon, like implying that he was, you know, but um, the, the more that I drew it, the more I was like, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In concept. I love that idea, but I hear you say where you're like, all right, I'm making it happen. Ah, it's not, it's, it's going to get lost or it's going to get muddy or it's going to be like too, tr it's going to be too much. Um, and let me show you the thumbnails of the sexy tie advanced shot. Ooh. So that's uh, here's that page. So oh, this yeah. was all on the iPad, and part of me was a little bit like, "Is this too much?" <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. Although I do like the uh, I like the question mark. Uh, yeah, one man. <laughs> <laughs> so so anime, you know? How can this be? One man? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who is? Who are these amazing guys? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Man, oh, have you have you seen uh, you've seen, you've watched Star Wars Visions? I assume I've never seen Star Wars Visions. No. Now is that a deliberate choice, or is that just because you are stacked and you have no <laughs> you have no time for anything? Partly, it's because I'm stacked. The other part is that, um, you know, I there's so much Star Wars stuff out there. Like, yeah, um, I believe I believe it when people say that Visions is quality. I'm also like. I tried, I tried Obi Wan, and I tried, oh. <laughs> I tried, um, oh, um, Boba Fett, Boba Fett, and I, I was, I kept falling asleep. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, maybe I'm just getting older. I don't know what the. I problem. hear you. No, I trust me. I, I, I was, I was in a similar spot with, uh, with both those shows that you're describing. It was one of those things where I waited, I waited so long to watch Andor because I was just like, by that point, by, by Boba Fett, I was like, all right, well, I think. <laughs> You know, it's I'm going to be Mando and that's kind of it. That's going to be my Star Wars. Yeah. And uh, and my friend, everybody I know was like, you got to watch Andor. And I'm like, I, I think I can get away with not watching it ever again, like or ever <laughs> in my life. And I because I'm like, I saw Rogue One, which I'm warming up to more as we get further away from its release. Sure. But uh, I got to tell you, man, it shows pretty fire. <laughs> like, I like Andor a lot. Here's here's my one. My one play. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I'm sorry to be that guy. No, oh, no, no. I am. I'm usually that guy. So I'm happy to defer. I think there are some absolutely incredible moments in Andor that like, like 
transcendent. Like when yeah. he hears about his um, adopted mother, you know, about her passing. Yeah. Oh, man, he's such a good actor. Yeah. And it's such a great moment. And then even the, uh, like the, the rebels stealing, uh, like the, um, yes, I thought that was great, but batteries in, or whatever that, yeah. In my opinion, I mean, that should have happened in like the beginning of episode three, right? <laughs> like, I mean, it's like taking this amazing ball of silly putty mm-hmm. and stretching it and stretching it and stretching it. And like, same thing with like stranger things. And you have to go, you have to slog through this, like, not like just stuff that it's like you can tell like you, you you watch these scenes you hear the lines and there's some amazing writers on andor yeah and there's some great moments but they're spread out it's like butter spread over too much bread it's, <laughs> that's right Bilbo. it needs yeah, to man. be like four episodes shorter and that's like yeah. with almost all of streaming it's like yeah. pa- it's like feels like padding and it feels like this not good 13 hour movie mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. makes me crazy because i'm like the story could be so good, but because you, know, I, for whatever reason, like the number of episodes or the quota or money or, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what the what the limitation is. It's it's one of those things where you remember when like streaming shows became the norm. It was pretty much like you know 2019 when like things are everything streaming, everything is like that's yep. the, that's the new future, that's the normal. And you get in these episodes that are oh, you know what it really was? It was Stranger Things. It was I remember when Stranger Things hit the scene and it was like oh let's watch Stranger Things and <laughs> season one and episode one was like 57 minutes and the next yeah. episode was like 42 minutes and I'm like yes we we figured it out because yeah. now it's like you know how long the episode is as long as it needs to be until yeah. it's done. And I'm like, that is exactly what we need to do. And then, like, you know, Marvel was like, hey, let's make Daredevil be, uh, you know, 47 episodes. And I, I, actually, <laughs> oh I picked the God, wrong one because I, I did actually love Daredevil, but like every it other was show. was good. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm in. But you're, like you said, there, I don't think there is a streaming show that's immune to the, to the padding. I think you're the, right. To the stretch. Because it's just like, I don't know what it is, but you're right. There's some kind of like imposition that they put on themselves that are just like, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's keep this rolling. And I'm like, you know, if you're going to keep it rolling, like there's, there's so many great moments in movies where you're like, God, if only this was just a little longer, usually it's like, Oh man, this space battle or this fight scene, or, <laughs> yeah. you know? Cause like, but, but I'm one of those dudes who's like all in on like those quiet moments between sure. You know, where it's like, let's just take this minute and just breathe. And it's like, Hey, let's just take this whole episode and breathe or focus on this <laughs> one character that no one gives a shit about and just give him the whole episode. <laughs> or like in stranger things, like if, there, there's like in season <laughs> whatever the latest season is yeah there was like at least four moments in that during that season where like if the characters had just not been idiots and just been honest with each other yes you would have shaved off like three episodes <laughs> completely like, like oh just, i know and yep. you know it's like i'm sure like because nobody who writes for stranger things is like trying to make something that's just a slog no i'm convinced there's like a producer or somebody who's like <laughs> this no we need to stretch this out pad Absolutely. pad pad no they've got to have some kind of formula like where's where's the uh you know oh, i'm trying to remember his name uh the the stoner from the most recent season like, oh um uh uh is he the metalhead yeah no is he a metalhead no the guy who's worse the pizzeria it doesn't matter. oh yeah i don't remember his name but i know who you're talking yeah. about or it's Argyle, I think, but like, uh, sure. yeah, but it's like, you know, where's the whole Argyle episode? We're going to meet his dad and we got to go <laughs> meet his pets and stuff. I'm like you got to, you got to have an episode that's just dedicated to some side character. I'm watching Ted Lasso. Same thing. They're like, Oh, but what about this one player on the team? And I'm like, who, who fucking cares at this point? <laughs> like we're, we're almost done with the show and, and, and we're spending time here. You know, like uh, watching I Ted feel- Lasso. I haven't seen Ted in three episodes. What are we doing here? I think you're right, dude. You mentioned Daredevil and like one of the most egregious. Oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> one of the most egregious moments where I felt this happening and I could feel the tide shifting in a bad way was when I watched Punisher season two, maybe where he's hanging out at a house in the <laughs> suburbs for yes. like an episode and a half. <laughs> it's the whole. Yes, I know exactly. What he's like about. doing chores. I'm like yeah. pulling my eyes out like. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Especially when you, you build, especially with season two of Punisher, where it's like we do a whole season and then we get that last like two seconds yep. where he like calls the two gangs together. He does he does a classic Punisher move. Yep. And where's the thing? And he just blows everybody away. And you're like, that could have been an entire season. 
Like you could have done this. Like how many people out there want to write like 22 to 47 minute long episodes that are basically just truncated Charles Bronson movies. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just, and, and that actually link, linking it back to this actual conversation. I want to be sure. like, this is it's, it's, it's like when you pick up a Daniel Warren Thompson comic where you're like, Oh, dead earth or extremity or, you know, murder Falcon or do a power bot where it's like, we get those moments, these character moments that are beautiful. And like, and what's great about comics is you're that you're there for as long as you need to be sure. You know, you need mom and daughter, like holding each other. Boom. You got it. And you got it for as long as that moment is, is, is impacting you. But then there's going to be a fisherman suplex right around the corner <laughs> and it is going to kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's going to be like nonstop. Uh, Barry Ray Bell is a perfect yeah. example of that, where you're just like, you're just there. And I love, you know, like Pip the Troll shows up and you're just like, right. Like, that does, who ca- uh, do we need to see where he came from, why he's there, how he got? No, we don't care. Does it matter? Does it add? Does it does it does it feed the story? No, let's just go. Let's just let's just get get to the damn thing. Yeah. And it's not and, and no moments wasted, you know, and I assume that that's uh, that's how you approach with your drawing as well, where it's like there's no. There's no wasted line. There's no wasted moment. It's just, it's just the the what's there. Yeah, I, I feel like there. When it comes to my art, I feel like there's a lot of wasted lines. Yeah, but, yeah, but well, here's the thing about that. I, I, I feel like detail. Yeah, but the detail is dope. You know, it's not one of those things. I mean, we we I think we came up. I don't know where'd you start first. When we, when did you get into comics for the first time? You mean like getting into reading comics? Reading comics, yeah. When you became a fan. Uh, probably like mid nineties, early nineties. Okay. So you, you came upon like the, 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 when the tide was shifting from, you know, your standard, your classics, your Marvel style Mm -hmm. to your image influence and how there's, you know, some real game changing art that is coming into the, into the, into the, into the, into the mainstream. And then you have some folks who are like, Oh, I could draw like that. Just add more lines. (laughs) Just more lines, make it more, just, just like make extraneous detail. And it's like, uh, 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 Todd can get away with that. <laughs> I don't know why, you know, how does he get, I don't know how, I don't know why he gets away with it. I don't know why this image of Spider-Man, like that's two pages of him just doing something that he would never do is so awesome. I don't, I can't tell you why it's so awesome. And this other thing seems like a pale imitation. I can't, I don't know. I don't know. It's just the way, it's just the, it's just a feeling, yep. you know? And, uh, but yeah. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Oh, of course. And yeah, I, that's one of the reasons why I don't really do ongoing series because I just, you know, the characters are like, well, what would the, what would the character do in this situation? <laughs> like, they would go take care of business yes. because of this reason. And uh, okay, so they're going to go do that. And it makes everything easier. And uh, cuts has a tendency to cut the wheat from the chaff. Mm. I mean, nobody wants to read a book about chaff. No, <laughs> just all chaff, please. Uh, have you gotten any notes where it's like, where's the chaff? Where, how, how come, you know, we could, we could get eight episodes. We could get eight to 10 issues out of this. Why are we, dro- why are we dropping it at five? Do you know, I tried. So um, I would, when I was working on murder Falcon, cause extremity, when I did extremity, it was 12 issues. It was two trade paperbacks. And I loved the concept and um, the whole idea of murder Falcon so much that I wanted murder Falcon to be 12 issues as well. Cause I was like, I get to work on this more. And like, yeah. Also, you know, I was getting a Patriot to work on murder Falcon. Cause I was partnering with skybound. So yeah. I was like, well, I can make more money up front if I do 12 issues. So I'm like, I'm going to make it 12 issues. And I banged my head against the wall for like <laughs> two weeks of like, how am I going to get this to be 12 issues long? And it's just like, the story was like, Nope, not happening. Like we don't want this many, all that. The, the whole concept of murder Falcon just starts sagging. Yeah. Uh, if you, it's like you overstay your welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So trying to recognize that. And I don't know, there's just been instances where you can just kind of feel when something is like going towards an end. And even with extremity, like when I was drawing that 12th issue, mm-hmm. pff, I was ready to be done. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure that I have a Hellboy like character in me as uh, much as yeah. I kind of wish I did. Like, I just think I just burn out. Like, yeah. even on my characters in my own design. And now, like, I don't draw extremity characters for fun anymore. I don't draw Murder Falcon for fun anymore. I don't mm-hmm. draw do a power bomb stuff anymore for fun. I mean, yeah. I still enjoy doing it for fans or commission or like sketching and hardcovers or whatever. But sure, you you do this, you tell the tale, you get it out of your system, and all of a sudden, I find myself moving on in into mm. other realms, which yeah. is almost like a death. 
in a way it's true yeah yeah you've you've told your you've you've told your story and you shed that skin now you're on to the next thing you've you've moved on um, yeah which is weird to say because i'm like i should draw murder falcon like every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but you got that like you told that story that's kind of that's that's very pure in a way <laughs> Where it's like, yeah, like a purifying yeah, I, fire. Exactly. You're just like, well, what do you do? Who's Murder Falcon? That's over. He's dead. <laughs> but dude, I've, like, yeah, I, I remember it. like before I worked on Murder Falcon, I was like an obsessive. I drew him obsessively. He's uh -huh. in like sketch, like page after page after page after page of my sketchbook. Like, I must get this out of me. And the only way to excise that demon is to draw it a ton. Same with Extremity. Uh, you know, even like Beta Ray Bill, like I drew Beta Ray Bill a bunch to a bunch to figure out less so than my own characters. Mm -hmm. um, but like do a power bomb like Lona had almost two or three different iterations of her character before I came up with that final look. Yeah, I mean, it was and I'm doing that now. I'm working on this epic sci fi book uh, that's like super intense and like. I've just the story's not quite there yet, so I'm like banging my head against the wall with all these designs, mm -hmm. um, and it's like every day, and like I'm I, like she is this main character. She's like littered throughout my past six sketchbooks, maybe more, maybe the past ten. Nice. She's been around since like 2018, and I'm over here like a crazy person drawing her again and again and again but i know as soon as i finish that story it's gonna be like four up as four issues and you'll be like ah well that's dead <laughs> <laughs> hopefully more than four i but. also yeah no it's like well that's that's the worst is like i can imagine you being like i'm getting better at it every day i could tell a six issue so i could tell a, a 10 issue series in three and your publisher's <laughs> like please don't <laughs> like for god's sake no yeah well you know you do have to give yourself like you said room for the fight scenes and room to have moments um and I am more than okay if those moments are earned to taking my time with them. And yeah. that's one thing I love about image too. It's like, if I need, if it needs to be longer, I make it longer. That's nice. That's really nice. Yeah. Uh, so you are now speaking of new projects and where we are right mm. now, uh, the announcement came and went. So thankfully we can, we're not, we're not telling tales out of school here, but you're working <laughs> on the transformers book <laughs> for <laughs> skybound. Oh, <laughs> now, what is your relationship with Transformers and how, where, do, you know, how long has it been? Were you a Transformers fan when you were a kid? Uh, and, you know, does that inform where you are now? I was a Transformers fan as a kid, but I was born in 87. So I missed the cartoon. Sure. Um, or the original airing of the cartoon. I should exactly. Say. You got reruns and, uh, and, and new generations. Like I assume actually, you yes, but right for beast wars. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yes. So, um, for sure. So my first experience with it was definitely the cartoon reruns after school, four o'clock PM <laughs> every day, religiously after school, I would watch that. And it was all season one and season two reruns. Um, and I just loved them. I mean, I just loved them and I'm not sure what it was. <laughs> I'm trying to like put my finger on it. Like what exactly was it about that? I mean, beyond it being like, trucks and planes transforming into robots that blew each other away <laughs> <laughs> yeah besides the uh, the obvious that uh, that was like market tested to work <laughs> for our gen for our demographic yeah, it's like uh, they took a sample of my dna and like put it into a toy and <laughs> exactly like yeah. i don't know why i connect with it so deeply but uh but yeah i think um a big part of it is um i think the design was i i, I definitely connected to there were shades of kind of Japanese design, which I mean, they came from Japanese toys. Yeah. Um, even though it was an American company making the show, I just, um, it was really my first, I think, honestly, if I'm like really trying to psychoanalyze it, I think it was like my first real interaction with like Japanese design, uh, like robot design, you know, like I didn't know Gundam. I didn't know, you know, uh, was it even black Gally getter or robo or <laughs> robot? Yeah. Robotech. Yeah. Your Robotech. And, um, um, or amazing or Z those kinds of things, you know, mm -hmm. which of course transformers wouldn't exist without, but, yep. um, I just had, I really connected to it visually and, um, I would draw it all the time and I Optimus prime was so hard to draw and I just draw them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I get so frustrated. Yeah. And it was actually a issue of, um, you know, the comic Richie rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, <laughs> 
It's a terrible comic that I did not enjoy, <laughs> but like there was an ad for the VHS version of Transformers the movie that came out in 86. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was on VHS and I I there was a whole lineup of all the, the Transformers that were in it and there was a picture of Optimus Prime because I would always try and do the VHS thing where I'd have my mom tape an episode of Transformers and then I would pause to try and be able to draw Optimus Prime because I needed yeah. like visual reference and there was no Google images at the time. Right. And, and but like, you know, Transformers had kind of had its day, you know, like it was the mid 90s. Nobody was really there were toys were in the in the shops. But like, I remember like getting the Optimus Prime toy at uh, Toys R Us and I like was playing with the Optimus t- Prime toy. I'd be like, this doesn't look like the cartoon. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, no, it's 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 only until like recently like that. Uh, that great one that transforms actually into a truck and he talks yep. and stuff like that. Like, I'm like, they, they did it. Finally, those Mad Men did it because it was like, yeah, no, he doesn't make sense. Like right. animation wise, you know, uh, the, the, the man version does not like <laughs> transform into a truck. They just draw a truck when he's transformed midway. Uh, but then they figured it out. They were like, yeah, these, these adult men who have watched this cartoon, they really want to know how it works. And, uh, and, and they I'm really like, want to be, they really want to buy it. Yeah. And they want to buy it and they'll pay through the nose for it. It's like, yeah, yeah, they will. So, um, you know, since then it's always been kind of something that I've loved and appreciated. And the first masterpiece Optimus that was ever released was when I was just coming out of college uh, maybe a senior in college. And I remember like, it was like maybe a hundred bucks, 120 mm. bucks. And I, I, I was, <laughs> I sent my mom an email. I was like, look, just in case you don't have any ideas for Christmas for me, <laughs> I'm just throwing this out there, you know? Yeah. And uh, we were at my grandparents that year and my mom got it for me. My mom and dad got me this Optimus masterpiece, right? And I'm opening it. I'm like 22, no 21. And I'm like <laughs> so pumped. And my grandfather's like in his like lazy boy being like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah like, who, no what kind way. of kid did you raise? <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't this something that he should be getting when he's like four? And it's like, yeah, I got that too. He's, he's like holding cool. it. He's like, he's like holding. He's like, si- si- he's like analyzing. This is a toy. <laughs> this is a toy. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't like bring you the, the paper in the morning. Like what yeah. the hell? Yeah. <laughs> These aren't socks. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's supposed to be a man I, now. What are you I, doing with this? Yeah. A treasured memory for sure. Oh, I love it. And That's I remember awesome. then years later in 2016, summer 2016, I went to go visit my grandfather who was dying of cancer. And it was my last hangout with him. And he's holding up space mullet, which had just come out. Nice. It's just, just been published. And he was slipping through it and it finally clicked. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's slipping through. He's like, people buy this. And I was right. like, yeah, you know, people do buy it. Not many people, but people do buy it. You know? <laughs> it's like, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah. Oh, that's I love that. That's so nice, though, that he actually like understood that he that he got you finally. Yeah, uh, finally. I, I, I like that Space Mall is the one that though that, that got through the armor. That's nice. Yeah, well, it was early days, you know, 2016. And that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. Or early ish days. After yeah. after go sleep before um, extremity, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, very very thankful for that moment. Thanks, Papa. Absolutely. Um, but uh, gosh, uh, but yeah. So Transformers, but you know, it's always been kind of there, and I've always kind of collected the toys. I've always been a big fan, and always kind of more of the G one vibe. Not really. Yeah, was not into the Michael Bay stuff at all. Mm. Um. And I love the 86 movie. I would like rent that from Blockbuster every other weekend as, mm-hmm. as often as my mom would let me. The scene of Optimus getting killed destroyed me. Um, <laughs> nice. Like many other children. Um, yep. But, you know, this opportunity kind of came down the pipe of being able to work on Transformers. And um, Skybound was like really looking to like, like, hey, we're going to go for it. Like, we really want to make this cool. We want to go, we, a return to the kind of classic vibe that uh, most layman transformer people may know. Yes. Um, which is something that I've always kind of wanted to do. Like no baggage of like um, continuity or anything like that. It's just straight, um, you know, a return to form. Exactly. And uh, I am not like, I was not super up on the IDW stuff when they were doing their things. I read a few things that I liked, but you know, like anything, 
you go in and out of stuff and um the transformers comics were never super uh the modern ones were never super influential on me but the mo- old marvel transformers comics were huge for me back in the day because i saw the show and i wanted anything that i could get uh-huh and i'd go to my local comic book store and ask the guys like you guys have any transformers comics it's like <laughs> 95 and they're like no kid nobody buys that like <laughs> yeah maybe and- in the bin yeah, they'd send me the bin, and they're all like a buck, two bucks, or whatever. And it's like right. scattered. They had like the oh, you're, you're not going to get like one through ten. You're going to no get way. like ten forty. Yeah, <laughs> exactly eighty five or however uh-huh. far it like went up to all scattered about. And I would buy every single one, and I'd come back the next week. I'm like, did you guys get any more Transformers comics? <laughs> I'd be like, kid, nobody buys that stuff. We are not going to have it in the shop. And every week I'd come by like, hey, any chance maybe you guys bought some Transformers <laughs> comics? And yeah. Like, kid, they don't sell. You're the only kid who asks about them. <laughs> and I'd come in every week and hound them about it. And they never got new Transformers comics. And then I started having my dad drive me to different comic shops around Massachusetts. So I could try and <laughs> nice. buy more Transformers comics. <laughs> uh, uh, so the Mar- the old Marvel run was big for me. And um transformers generation two which was like mm-hmm. super violent and like really intense and like a lot of like oil and oil blood uh-huh <laughs> yeah that, that was my jam too it's so like nice. megatron looked so nasty and yeah um so that's definitely kind of more kind of where i come from and uh but yeah it's just exciting to be able to work on it and it's uh it's it's a blast like i'm having a really good time drawing it yeah i i saw i've seen a couple of like promo pieces i think or they're just like you know the first issue cover and yep. uh, a little bit of a lineup like here's here's who you can expect i think on social media skybound's like everybody get get in line because it's gonna be <laughs> awesome and i'm like yup uh and you're being teamed with uh you're teaming up with mike spicer again i understand to do uh the I am. And stuff. of course i awesome. had to have mike do it and russ wooten is joining us for letters great um which is great um and yes uh, there's been some few promo pieces that have been released and you know, this is t- a totally legit thing to ask for, but Skybound, like when I first joined on and we're getting promo things ready, they're like, we'd really like to have a cover of like all the the teams like lined up, you know, so we can do a reveal like every mm-hmm. day of the week, we'll reveal a new Autobot. Order. And man, if there's one difficult thing about drawing Transformers, it's st- having them draw standing, not moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can really analyze like how they work. And, oh my uh, yeah. God, that's so know. hard. And <laughs> it was also like, early me like trying to figure out how to draw the characters so i'm seeing them get revealed now and i'm like god these look awful <laughs> <laughs> no P- I- i've only heard good things i was re- i was watching uh, the most recent episode of uh, friday with uh, on your channel and i think you were like i'm trying to get this leg and it was too <laughs> straight it wasn't straight enough and yeah. uh i'm just like god i remember like grabbing transformers comics throughout my years and just being like God bless whoever has to draw all this, <laughs> all these squares and triangles, uh, because you know you you could. I think that the like sometimes it's amazing to see like a like a fully rendered human being on the page. It's incredible. It's like you know you got your Alex Rosses and whatnot. Oh yeah. But then like, but but some of the most fun is when you're just like super ultra stylized. Like people can you, people you can really fudge as long as you mm-hmm. get like the proportions right or at least some like the the implication of a human being. You get it. But with a robot, <laughs> especially one that you pop culture has ingrained into your like <laughs> sense memory of being like, I know what Optimus Prime looks like and right. I know what he doesn't look like. <laughs> And uh, I'll tell you, like, I remember watching like Beast Wars back in the day and being like, this is a really cool show. But then occasionally they'd be like, and Optimus Prime might show up. And I'm like, (laughs) no. And then he did kind of. And you're like, it doesn't look like him at all. Like, that's (laughs) that's man, I guess. Yeah, I guess I would like to see a G1 show in CG, but not not yet. And then. Sure enough, I'd have to wait until the Bumblebee movie to get like an awesome looking <laughs> Generation One Transformers movie in the form of a five minute intro. Do you know it's so funny? It's been a, a bit of a l- experience. Um, you know, I, it's good humble salad to um, have a subsection of fans just not like anything that you're doing. <laughs> but I am, I am hearing from the very vocal minority of Transformers fans. My favorite comment now on social media. <laughs> When yeah. a new one of my drawings is revealed, is in all caps, boring. <laughs> <laughs> How could that be boring? Like, what does that even mean? I don't What's, know. What do they want you to I do? Zhuzh him up, like, give him some chains, put know. some spikes on him. Like, I, I don't know what they were looking for. 
I, there's a, there's a, within the Transformers culture, yeah. there is a lot of people that are tired of the G1 look, which is yes. fair. That's fine. Um, but you know, but that's like, what they look like. And this, it's, I mean, I that's what I connect to. So that's just what I'm going to draw. Exactly. And, um, yeah. Has, Hasbro actually was like when I I asked my editors before I signed the contract, I was like, hey, these are going to be G1, right? Like these designs. Like, <laughs> yes, hundred percent. We're going back to the classics. Like I'm like, nice. okay, that's what I'm excited about. And then Hasbro's first note of my designs were like, these look a little too G1. You should design your own. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. And oh, um, like they said, design your own. You're like, mm, okay. I mean, it it would it would be cool, mm-hmm. but um, you know, it's just not the reason why I took the project. You know, I wanted yeah. to draw the things from my childhood, which you know, I guess is maybe a poor business decision, but a great way to have fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's I, I think that the the people who think it's boring to see uh Daniel Warren Johnson's Transformers <laughs> have no idea what they're they, these are folks who are coming off of Reddit going like, oh I hear they're making a Transformers comic. I haven't read a comic book in 25 years, <laughs> but uh I'm thinking I might want to check this out. Oh man, it just looks like the G1. Boring. Like dude, nuts. No. My favorite is I like I need to not do this, you know, because I go yeah. through the comments and there's um it's fine it is what it is right i'm in the entertainment industry people are allowed to have an opinion and yeah. um it's just like really sometimes it's very mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and it's intertwined with their love of like certain characters right so like of course everybody when a uh, sound wave got announced today and there's a lot of people who are upset that it's not sound blaster and I'm like, I don't even know what Sound Blaster is. No, me too. I, I have no just, idea what that means. It's <laughs> like he's Soundwave, but with a different color scheme and like I guess a different character. He's a different character, you know? Yeah, but I'm like, I can't keep up. Yeah, yeah, I can't keep up. I can't keep up, guys. You know? Right? Yeah. Well, I did get some street cred with the Transformers fans, though. I will say, your poor listeners, right? They don't they don't know anything about Transformers culture. I hope but so. I mean, I think so. <laughs> I got street cred for uh, in a lineup of Autobots, having uh, Cliff Jumper be the yes. Autobot in front and not Bumblebee. Everybody thought it was yeah. going to be Bumblebee. Of course, it's be Cliff Jumper. Yeah, who is essentially just a repainted Bumblebee. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Cliff Jumper is fun. Yeah, that was. I, I I actually saw the same scuttlebutt about that. Uh, oh yeah no, no reference to beta ray bill implied but uh i saw some folk being like hey like le- legitimate people being le- people online going legit cliff yeah. jumper not <laughs> uh not bumblebee check this out and then of course the inevitable like uh, this but bumblebee will be in the comic right like, we are gonna get bumblebee <laughs> though i mean it's, it's cool that you're doing cliff, cliff jumper but like you know <laughs> I'm like okay like some folk were like man like i can't believe that they didn't do the movie synergy with bumblebee and i'm like this is not the movie <laughs> this is a comic book of the freaking first season of the show like what are you doing man um, well it's all good you know people are allowed to have an opinion and it keeps me course. on my toes and uh, <laughs> i'll bet yeah you never you never know what the, just, where yeah. it's gonna come from and it's yeah. fine whatever it's and at the end of the day like of course i i want to share my work with other people but I'm not really making transformers for anybody else except me. If that's, that makes sense. I think that means that it's going to sell because people, you know, that's if you, as long as you do it for you, you will do, you, you know, quality work that you'll want to see. And, uh, that's really exciting. That is the goal. Thank you. Now, uh, I understand that it's also, um, part of a kind of like shared universe. Uh, can we talk about that at all? Or should sure. we, uh, leave it all? Like, I know that, um, God, what was the uh, insane titled book Vector One? Or I can't remember what the hell it was called. I didn't do my research. I'm sorry. Oh, Void Rivals. Void Rivals. Thank you. Uh, that was kind of like the like setup where it's like here's here's where we're going. And yep. um, but uh, yeah, are you how how um, how interwoven in the like larger narrative is your Transformer series going to be? Well, it's definitely taking place in the same universe. So there will be shout outs to um, I don't know how much Void Rivals stuff will be in it, but um, it's still early days. Yeah. But, you know, a few nods here and there to G.I. Joe. Nothing too intense. Um, 
you know, things change every day and it's kind of up and down as far as like what is getting included and what is not. But so far I've been pretty much left to my own devices in the Transformers world. That's cool. Um, and I have not had to think too much about uh, mostly G.I. Joe stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, favorite Decepticon? Skywarp. Ooh, Skywarp. Nice. He's the purple seeker. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, he's kind of a dummy too. Mm-hmm. Like a lovable dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, wait, hold on. I, that's it's kind of a basic answer though. Skywarp. Well, who else? Who else? Who else? Let me just think about this for two seconds. Yeah, sure. It's definitely not Megatron. No way. No. Dude, I think it's Skywarp. I just love that. I I love the um color, the colorway. Yeah, like, I love purple. his design. It's just so cool. And also, I love all the Seekers. I have all of the Masterpiece figures. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Yeah, Skywarp. Nice. Nice. Give me more. That's funny. Give me more. Give me another Oh, question. man. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> favorite human that hangs out with the Transformers? <laughs> um, I don't have a favorite human, at least not from the show. I probably will after I finish writing the book, mm. after I finish my run on it. Yeah. Uh, favorite Autobot, definitely Optimus Prime. I Basic assumed. B answer, but sorry, is what He's it is. The dopest. No, that was uh, what was my favorite as well. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I, like, there's a reason. There's yeah. a reason everybody wants to see him. No, exactly. He's he's iconic. He's uh, you know, he's got the incredible voice. Uh, his design uh, just just trumps all. Uh, yeah, Perfect. I want to see like you know all the all the all the America themed superheroes just hanging out like you know, get superman spider-man optimus prime just get them all in one big scene um Heck but yeah. uh yeah man it's as far as that's concerned okay all right um uh yeah do you uh oh will we be seeing any other characters like ultra magnus i like get anything for any holdovers from the uh, from the animated movie i will say this um the animated movie from 86 i'm kind of using as my visual bible that's fair so take that how you will. Um, yeah. I can't get too deep into who is going to be showing up from the cast. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that the uh, the head design of Optimus Prime, I feel, was the best in s- the animated movie. Yeah, easily. Yeah, I mean, like, because it was kind of all over the place with a little bit more of a bulbous design in season one and season two. Yeah. Then they kind of perfected it in the movie, and that held through through season three. But... um. Or, I mean, he died, but when they brought him back. When they brought him back, yeah. Um, that that movie sculpt is, that's my jam. That movie just, it looks, well, obviously, you know, they had overseas animators and they had time and money to really like make it look the way you remember it looking. Like, you know, yeah. you, I, anytime I watch any show from the 80s where I'm like, hey, hey, my, my that was my jam. You watch like two seconds, you're like, whoo, that was... um. It does not look like I remember it. Uh, or or the, the intro did a lot of heavy lifting. Yep. Uh, I'm looking at you, Thundercats, where I'm like, that, which which may be, I think like people are saying like that's that might be like one of the single greatest pieces of like animation in that's the good. 80s ever made was like that's that opening. Good. It, I've never seen anything look like that ever again. You know, where I'm yeah. like, and then of course, like that, you're, you watch that show, you're like, yes. And then the first episode, you know, the first two minutes of the show, Snarf is involved in like a, he's stuck in a pipe or something. And you're like, Okay, this is going to be like that <laughs> intro, though, right? Like, <laughs> we are going to get something really cool soon, and it's like, no, yep, not really, not going to look like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, I feel like there's a few things. Well, from the '80s, at least. Oh gosh, yeah. I don't know that much, but dude, that movie it looks so good still. Yeah, it still holds up. Although, have you noticed? It's funny. I was just watching it. Not, I was watching clips of it the other day. The, the sound is a little weird. Like it's, there's no ambient sound. It's just like if there's dialogue and then there's music, but like <laughs> characters will just be in this, in this like empty soundless void. Yeah, and, oh yeah. Like, I just talk to each other and you're like, you got, you're going to throw in like maybe like a <laughs> wind or some kind of like sound. Some sort I, of I, reverb. Yeah. Like something. I mean, like I appreciate and you know, it's not, there was not, they weren't thinking about this. But like when uh, Unicron is talking to Megatron and turning him into Galvatron and you're like, there is nothing. There's just those. There's just Nimoy and Norson Wells in two separate booths being recorded. And then they just played those sounds. And I'm like, well, at least they're in space. You know, that's <laughs> almost that's actually kind of accurate. But I know you don't know that or care. So like this is just an, a byproduct of your laziness. Um, 
but yeah, uh, there's something weird about those about those movies where I'm like, there needs to be like a sound remaster for the for this movie where they need to put in some like, I don't know, give it give it some kind of gravitas because yeah, right now it it's just kind space. of space. Yeah, give it some space. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, uh, I just got the UHD version of the uh, movie, which looks even better than the Blu-ray. Um, yeah, I've only seen it on DVD. I think is cla- the last time I ever watched that movie again. The UHD, I mean, it's like I, th- you know, you, it's without uh, an AB way to see it. You know, you're. I just did a quick AB. I watched a scene in a, on the Blu-ray, then I switched out for the UHD, and I was blown away. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I'm getting back into uh, physical media now because of the whole like streaming problem, you know, like, hey, we made a show and we're canceling it and we're deleting it from the public consciousness. So good luck with that. And I'm like, OK, I'm starting to that's I'm like, OK, I'm going to order all the Spider-Man cartoons. I'm getting all Justice League and Batman. They made series and Superman. Got to buy all these cartoons. Like, yep, that will disappear forever because it's yep. like, what was the point? Uh, but uh, I always wonder about like and, and it was part of what pushed me into streaming in the first place was you, you know, Blu-ray was the way to go. And then it was like ultra Blu- Blu-ray and ultra HD and stuff like that. But like you'd get these, you'd, you'd get these reviews or these like setups where it's like, Oh, this is a bad transfer. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean a bad train? Like you, just, just do, just put the movie here. <laughs> and it's like, Oh no. Like apparently like uh, the Blair witch project sucks on Blu-ray because the sound is wrong. And I'm like, but the sound is everything. You, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so I, I've been kind of scared to get back into physical media, but uh, you know, with I don't do like it very that. often still. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't have a ton of space in yeah. my house, but <laughs> um, every once in a while, like I remember I bought Dune on UHD cause I was Ooh. like, that was so good. Yeah. And uh, I remember I, wa- I saw it in like IMAX and it was just glorious. And then yeah. I watched it on streaming a month later and it's all like compressed and like the sky in the background has like particle bits in it. Oh, you know? and yeah. It's like, nope, nope. I'm not rewatching <laughs> this on streaming. I'm just not doing it. And I yeah. went out, I bought the UHD and it looks amazing. That's awesome. And I've got I, a uh, nice TV. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get back into it. My TV was nice 10 years ago. And it's like, okay. That was a sweet TV when I got it 10 years ago. And I'm like, yeah, I, and my wife could not care less. She's like, same, same. <sighs> My yeah, she's like, it looks fine. I'm like, no, you don't understand. The blacks are so, <laughs> they're not, they're not deep enough. I don't have enough. Ro- there's no, there's, no, there's, there's, there's no warmth. She's like, you want it? You, you want us to spend twenty five hundred dollars on a nice TV? And I'm like, yes, I do, desperately. She's like, well, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and I was like, I was, yeah. I, I, my wife says the same thing. She's like, what's wrong with this one? Yeah, this I'm is, like, this is not an OLED. <laughs> exactly no i'm like this is an lcd tv i mean yeah lcd boo yeah she's like it's 70 inches and i'm like no the next one will be 77 inches <laughs> and she's like okay this this conversation needs to be tabled for now like <laughs> we need one to get my, a new car one of the best moments of my whole life is we started with a 19 inch tv when we got married back in 2012 and it was fine yeah and then we upped it to a oh gosh like 24 five or 30 maybe 40 something Mm -hmm. like that yeah and then we um eventually uh got a 55 that was in our we moved apartments we got a 55 inch tv and when we moved into this house it was our we were just the way the living room was just bigger so we had to sit farther away and i was like babe we need a bigger tv it's gotta get bigger yeah (laughs) and after many convincing finally got the sony oled you know and it's 65 inches and it's nice glorious yeah <sighs> we went back to a friend's house one day and they have a 55 inch and she sat down and we're <laughs> about the same way far away and she looks at me she goes this tv is so small and i'm like babe <laughs> ah babe i told you babe yeah we'll never go back <laughs> we can only go up from here central yeah. air and oleds forever <laughs> that's right that's that you know, Big time. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I will never I will never look back. No, central air is a must have. And I'm Ooh. I'm now I'm now in a place where we just got it. Natural gas. I was Hell like, yeah. this is nice. My 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 uh my power or no my energy bill went from like forty seven hundred dollars a season to eleven. Hell yes. And I'm like, oh, now we can afford the TV. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Where you go, dude? <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, oh man, I gotta get Transformers on. Uh, well, I gotta get the TV first. That's the problem is that I'm not getting those uh, high def DVDs or uh, Blu-rays because I'm like, well, who cares? It's not an LCD screen. It's it's it's, it's wasted on me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I'm so hyped for uh, for your Transformers run. Um, I'm hyped too. You're you're talking about a uh, another sci-fi project coming up. I know you don't want to give too many details away, but uh, you got a you got a target date for the first issue or. No, not really. <laughs> no, it's been Fair. greenlit by Image. I just, oh, you know, it's one of those things where uh, it's just not ready yet, and not I just. get so impatient, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm drawing it in my sketchbook, and I'm like, it's got to be ready by now, right? It's been like five years or however long, and it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, when it's ready, it'll be ready, and I'll know, <laughs> um, and you know. Because it's epic sci-fi, it's well-trodden ground, you know? Right. And I have kind of, I don't know, I feel like I'm pretty good at, like, bringing something new to the table when I make stuff. Um, And, you know, I feel like kind of all sci-fi at this point is a little derivative, which is okay. I like, sometimes I kind of like derivative. Yeah. Um, But I just, you know... It's close. It's really close. But yeah. the if you will watch my live streams Friday with D-Dubs, I, every once in a while I'll draw this main character. Her name is Silver. Everybody knows what she looks like on the stream. They're like, oh, we know that character. You know, it's something <laughs> you're putting on it. When I first started it, it was at the beginning of the pandemic, and I was like, oh, for my project for the YouTube channel, I'm going to work on this and do concept art and uh, scripts and stuff. And uh, so the first few live streams I did were of like – pitch pages for this project, which then have now been collecting dust. Cause <laughs> it just, I, I remember like the feeling I was getting as I was drawing these. I'm like, it shouldn't be this hard. Yeah. Comics should be hard, but it shouldn't be strife. Yes. Um, and uh, so it's a work in progress. And I wish I could say that it'll be the next project, but who even knows, man, at this it's point, true. like it's true. I, I will always be writing and drawing something. So, I am writing and drawing six issues of Transformers, um, and then we'll see where the world takes me. I just really want to be able to still make my own stuff too, which is really yeah. important to me. But I also know that I don't want to be a creator that just like pumps things out uh, before they're ready, especially stuff from my own of my own creation. You know, I I, I don't want that to feel half baked. Totally, and unfortunately. As much as I wish it were not the case, original stuff just takes time. I mean, stuff yeah. that's worthwhile, it just takes time. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All of your, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't know what, you know, it's, it's funny. Some folk have such a distinct style. You got to come up with something else, you know, like Spike Lee joints. Yeah. As, you know, but like uh, the, the, the D-dub original joints are uh, so focused and singular Mm. You know, like you could you could count them on one hand and you're like, all right, extremity, murder falcon, you know, like you got the do a power bomb. Mm-hmm. Like these are yours and they're distinctly yours. And each each one goes to the next thing. You can watch your progression as an artist and as a storyteller. Uh, you can see like the the evolution of your style and your own uh, abilities as a storyteller. Um, and yeah, they are emblematic of like your your journey. And if you had done like two or three projects in between those, you know, would they, would those, would those few stand out mm. the way that they do, you know, and, mm. and, and, and resonate because every time a new Daniel Warren Johnson original drops, people are like, people take notice mm. right now, you know? Mm. Um, although I do wish Banner Ray Bill sold better <laughs> because that book was, uh, <laughs> was awesome. And I, and I, I wish it had been a paradigm shift for Marvel where it's like, this is, this is something special folks. Um, regardless of the king and black tieism of it, uh, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, and don't worry, <laughs> there is a symbiote war going on too." And it's like, "I, I know, yeah, but like," and then they immediately leave. <laughs> they're like, "No, that's- yeah, well, they, yeah." My Andrew was like, "You just have to tie in king and black just for the first issue. You can literally deal away with it, yeah, uh, however you want in a few pages, but it has to be in there somewhere." And then they were like, "Maybe it could be the brood," and I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> How about? An effing dragon named Fin Fang Foom, uh, which is a really good uh, uh, tone setter. He shows Amen. up and it's just like, yeah, you're like, okay, I'm in. 
that was so uh, it was such a joy to do that uh, as an episode on, on, oh. on our thing to talk to the guy. Whenever guys. I'm feeling down, I'll watch that episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, they're just like yes, <laughs> yeah, it feels good. It's awesome. Yeah. Dead Earth is the same thing, man. That was, that yeah, was one dude. of those books where I'm like, this book is crazy. And then my wife is like, you know, I was reading Extremity, and you were like, who cares? <laughs> before like i remember she came up to you at a con she was like oh he has a she, she's like he has a sketch cover of extremity and i'm like cool <laughs> <laughs> she's like he gave he signed it for me and everything i'm like good for him whoever that is that's awesome and then i saw the promos for dead earth and i'm like i'm an idiot <laughs> uh and then I'd go back and i'm like oh good thing my wife is actually taste and i was like reading her extremity I'm like this is a great book did you know this she's like god damn it <laughs> um but yeah man uh great stuff i'm so hyped for the next thing transformers i love that like you know it's one of those things where you're oh and the the star wars black white and red uh which is i assume it's like an anthology there's a number of stories one of which is yours yep it's 12 pages awesome and uh what do, do you know when that drops is that it's like it's like soon isn't it tomorrow june whatever yeah june, june 28th, 28th. Oh my so god! It so it'll already be out by the time people see this. Go buy it for God's Thank sake! God. Did you saw the page? You know it's awesome. <laughs> oh man, I'll, I'll, we'll send people off with one more. Ooh! Since it's coming out after the fact, right? Exactly. They'll have already seen it. So you. All right, hold on. I'll show you some more stuff that uh, Marvel made me change. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Marvel or Lucasfilm? Was it, uh, or, or is it both? Are they like uh, uh, Lucasfilm? I, I should say. I should, do you ever get clear. like that? Do you ever get conflicting like things where Marvel's like, "This is good. We are good, good to go," and then Lucasfilm was like, "No, you're not." Um, not really. <laughs> the Marvel editors were pretty dialed in. They would like give me warnings. So like, I don't think Lucasfilm's going to go <laughs> for this. <laughs> I don't think they're going to like that, mommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we might need to get rid of that, mom. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. uh here is another uh here's another shot of uh, <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> die <laughs> yeah i can imagine them being like who is this really aggressive rebel pilot <laughs> so no to be fair lucasfilm did not get rid of this because they didn't want ha to have somebody say die on their um thing uh it's because i guess it's like there's no english in star wars Oh yeah, it's, it should be in like Bakshi or whatever the hell. Or, yeah, whatever. And like, I guess we could probably translate it, but that would like probably take too long, and it wouldn't fit on the nose of an X-wing. I was like, just fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and um, you hand lettered that, I assume. Like you, you I did hand letter that, and then um, here's another one, Imp Killer. <laughs> 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 that I definitely, they definitely made. You me. got some notes. <laughs> well, no. They, Again, I think they were like, honestly, I think they were okay with it saying imp killer. It just couldn't be in English. So oh, it had to be in their. <laughs> it had to be in the, like the thing, which I had no idea. Like what? There's a Star Wars language. I don't know this stuff. I'm not a nerd. That's not, I'm a total nerd. But... <laughs> right. Let me just get my, get my Optimus Prime figure out of the way. I forgot that uh, people are already going to see this. So now I'm showing you. Yeah. Oh, oh spoiler warning, I guess. Oh my God oh yeah bro look at this and uh, now I, I love seeing um your full black pages because they're always just like i just imagine just a big fat ma like magic marker <laughs> just like uh what you know those you know those markers that you weren't supposed to smell but everyone did when you were a kid that were like silver oh hell yeah dude with the big chisel just like, oh yeah yeah get <sighs> high <laughs> don't uh sniff your markers ladies and look gentlemen. at this dude look at look at how many kills he's racked up oh my god this dude yeah oh. and he's still gonna die <laughs> uh, good times that's awesome good times when you get one of these things do they go uh just just go for broke or do they are they like oh we think you might be really good for this story that like this outline this idea no they they, they left it pretty open you know they nice. I've been approached by Marvel to do other Star Wars stuff, but I, it was not. This is a while ago, and it was not to write and draw. It was just to draw. And I said, uh, "Hey, um, I really am only interested if um, we, if I can write and draw." And they're like, "Okay, mm -hmm. noted." And uh, next time they came, it was for this, so it was really, it was fun. I had a great nice. time. Oh, 
Well, it's always a pleasure talking with you and for and, and going over the pages, man. Uh, folks, check that out. Subscribe to uh, Something From Nothing with Daniel yep. Warren Johnson, the official channel uh, on YouTube here. Uh, get them past 10,000 because congratulations on that. That's a really big achievement. Thank uh, you. And it should be celebrated. Uh, and watch every Friday or most Fridays. Uh, with Most uh, Fridays you know, when I'm not traveling or I'm not absolutely completely wasted on exhaustion. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> and even then, sometimes you put out a little video that's like, "Hey guys, sorry." <laughs> uh, no yeah, I, I need to go on a date. I need to live. <laughs> yeah, which is so sweet. I love that. I love that. It's like, no, I got a life, man. I got to take it. Right on, um, bro. But uh, thank you for being here, and thank you everybody for watching. Check out that. Pick up that issue of uh, Star Wars: Red, mm-hmm. White, and Black, and, and uh, or whatever it's called, Black, White, and Red. Yeah, you know what it is. <laughs> go get it. And Darth uh, Vader kills people. <laughs> Imp killer. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars mommy. Yeah. And uh, we'll <laughs> see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. So Peace. Long.